Today I'd like to talk about how to demonstrate and remove the integrated heat spreader from off the CPU of an Intel Xenon 5680 Westminster processor to be used specifically in 2009 through 2012 Mac Pro models. What was uh, unique about these Mac Pro models during those years is they really didn't differentiate very much with the, the design of the motherboard components other than the processors and maybe the memory. And so it was actually quite easy to update the CPUs on these things if you knew how to do it. And for the most part, many people have uh, purchased new CPUs on Apple specs, but the problem has always been that the original CPUs that Apple put in them were lidless, as they called them. It didn't have the integrated heat spreader. And you can see this is actually one of the original um, uh, CPUs from a 2009 model uh, Mac Pro that has been removed. And so with this demonstration today, specifically, we're going to uh, show you how to remove this uh, integrated heat spreader from the uh, CPU without damaging it. During this demonstration, I'll show you how to effectively remove or desolder this uh, integrated heat spreader and also how to remove the solder from the, the top of the die. This is the original uh, Intel Xeon processor E5520. It has four cores and there were two of these processors in, in the Mac Pro model which I am um, actually going to be upgrading. We will be replacing this today with the Intel Xeon 5680 processor. You can see that they're identical in size so they'll fit the slot perfectly. One of the problems with replacing the processors uh, with lidded, lidded versions and not removing the lid first uh, is that you have about a two millimeter additional thickness right here. And that's just enough to, if you over tighten the, the uh, screws on the heat sink, there's a possibility of damaging your logic board or not fully properly seating the uh, um, CPU as well. So there's, there's a whole host of problems and you know there's literally about a dozen or so videos on YouTube showing people how to do this. And it's, it's more of a hassle actually, I think, to do it that way than to do it the correct way. Apple is specifically designed their um, their machines, you know, to use the unlidded versions like this, and, and, and the why is that? According to Overclock.net, uh, they with the advantages of unlidded um, processors you can achieve higher uh, clock speeds. You know, it does require higher volts, but you also get lower temperatures. And that's one of the key things, as you know, anybody that's a Mac Pro uh, owner of 2009, 2012, there's like about like about four or five different fans in that thing and you know for good reason so anytime you can bring down the temperature it'll increase the longevity of your machine and cause you less hassles over time the tools that we'll be using for this procedure it's actually pretty simple we're just going to be using these you know industrial razor blades which you can get at any hardware store a pencil torch you can get pick these up for about fifteen dollars at a hardware store as well but the uh, reason we're using this, and I, I, I really stress the importance of using the right tools for the right jobs, because if you were to use, and I've seen people use regular lighters and, and even iron, irons, clothing irons, to try to unsolder heat spreaders, and you're just asking for problems. And, and secondly, this you want to limit the amount of heat that, that you put on this. You just want to get that thing off without adding more heat than you have to. And so this does the job very well. It has a very focused beam of heat right here, and it's very small. And so when you're actually delitting it, we'll just be running the flame back and forth across this area right here fairly quickly. And in less than just, I don't know, a, a few seconds, it's going to pop off. There's also something else you have to be concerned with yeah, with these is, is on the inside that runs your perimeter there's a mastic type glue and so we'll have to go ahead and remove that or, or at least uh, break that bond of glue between the uh, integrated heat uh, spreader and uh, the die itself so the easiest way to do that is with these razors now it's really important to just to take your time now there's I, one thing I don't recommend is using a exacto knife 
uh, I can't tell you how many times I've cut myself with X-Acto knives because you're putting pressure on them and then it will slip and then it will just go through and cut yourself. The importance here is just taking your time and being very careful what you're doing. Uh, this is a putty knife I picked up at the, the auto parts store for Bondo, but this is like a dollar. And I'll show you what this is for. This is to, once we remove the solder from the uh, integrated heat uh, spreader, it, you know, the, the solder is pretty soft, but you'll want to scrape as much as you can off the top of the die, and you don't want to use any metal whatsoever. And so this is where having a, uh, a plastic putty knife or an old, you know, card of plastic card or something like this, so, so those will work as well. Now I also have a, and this is optional, this is a, uh, a set of helping hands. This is, I'm gonna use to, to hold the CPU in place just like this Why I'm applying heat to the bottom and then I'm going to allow gravity then once it breaks it seals for it to fall down or fall off. And you notice I'm using a, a piece of just a, a cardboard from a blister pack of, of something that I purchased and it just rigid enough just to hold it. You don't want to use any plastic or anything like that just because the chance of it getting hot and melting and we're just trying to prevent any heat from uh, being applied or melting onto the CPU, especially on the back here, you can see all the contacts for all the different uh, connector connections for the the seat processor itself. And then, of course, I have 600 grit or finer uh, wet or dry sandpaper, and this is almost like a polishing grit. And uh, you can pick these up at the auto store as well. And this is what we'll use to finally polish and remove the the fine residue of the uh, solder that's still on the CPU itself. The, 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 the important thing is that when you're, when you're sanding is I have a, like a piece of hard, hard, hard foam. Um, this is uh, uh, that I've created for my own uh, sanding block. And so just we'll get that wet and, um, and just kind of gently just scrape off that, that fine uh, layer of, of solder that's, that's on that CPU. So, so we'll go ahead and, and start here. Like I said, it's important just to take your time. Gently start in a corner and just kind of push it in. Like I said, be careful not to press too hard and either cut yourself or damage, damage the CPU. It, it, you notice and use this one as an example you do have some portions of, of the chip that uh, extend beyond where the die itself is, so you don't want to go too deep. So we'll just gently, and starting on the corners works best. As you see, it's starting just to go in fairly easy. It's not too difficult, and then you just kind of wiggle it and we notice that I'm using this as a guide. I don't want to extend past um, the blade any further inside than that. What I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to just push a razor blade in just almost to the point, back, right past the point where I've broken the seal. And the reason for that is, is I need to put just a little bit of tension. I don't need to put much. And according to overclock.net, they said you shouldn't do this. Though I've done this, like I said, about three times already, and I've never had an issue. There isn't, and, and you, you have to put a little, or at least I believe you do, or else you're going to end up putting and applying too much heat during the removal process to want to get that off. So it's just enough tension once as soon as that heats up that it's going to melt the solder and it's just going to pop off. And so that's kind of what you want. So when you're when you're finally broken the seal and, and all around, it, it should look something like this. And uh, this is pretty much where you want it to be. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up here for my helping hands. And I'm putting the terry cloth down because when you heat these things up, they get hot. And this uh, this metal here is uh, 
really conductive of heat. Let it fall on something like a cherry cloth and you can pick it up and then um, uh, put it in some water with a pair of tweezers or something or uh, pliers. But you don't want it to like drop on anything synthetic or even like on the carpet. It'll burn a hole in your carpet. So we're just going to go ahead and put this here. Yeah. As you can see, the processor is just floating under here. I'm going to just turn it a little bit. You can see that. As you can see, I've cut a hole in this cardboard and it's just floating in there. It's just sitting there. And so I'm just going to apply the heat along the direction of the processor. Now you can actually see the outline of the processor here. And so we're going to apply the heat within this area right here. And we're just going to use a motion of going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and just right in this area. We're going to apply as heat as quickly as possible and have that thing pop off so we're not um, adding more heat and possibly end up damaging the CPUs. And that would be a very costly mistake. And we see we have a nice blue flame, which we are going to now apply All right, that's all it took. And we see that here's here's the die or the the heat spreader itself with it. And we're just going to cool that off in some water so we don't want to burn ourselves. This is probably the hardest part right here is just getting this dumb thing off. And so let's go ahead and carefully now look at this. So now that we've removed the second um uh, lid um, from the processor. We'll just get ready now to uh, scrape off the the excessive carefully. I should say we don't ever want to use anything metal on this die. We don't, and, and the reason is we want to make this as polished surface as possible, and so that's why we use the very very fine grit sandpaper that we're using. You know, 600 and above uh, to get that mirror finish. So it'll be really important to. Uh, make sure you take your time, especially on this, and not pit it because the surface, you know, we want to make sure we're maximizing the surface uh, completely and when we put on some really good uh, thermal paste like Arctic Silver, uh, one of those brands, and uh, so the connection is, is really good. Now, one of the other benefits of when not just clock speed and uh, additional cores that, that you get when you're making this upgrade, you also get um, the ability to um, use faster memory. Um, okay, now comes uh, the, the process of just scraping this this off, the old the old solder, and I'm using a, a plastic uh, spudger. Oh, one of the things I forgot to mention, and that we'll do now, is you don't want to, you know, solder is is metallic, obviously, and it um, we we don't want to risk contaminating any of the contacts, and so. What I recommend, since we're now not using any heat and these are cool, is to get yourself some of this uh, Scotch 3M uh, painter's tape. Uh, it, it doesn't leave a residue and uh, it, will, it will protect the contacts while we're working on them. our little handy dandy scraper here and just gently kind of scrape off this top layer of solder and you can see how soft it is it's it's just it will peel the majority of it will peel right up and I'm not applying that much pressure I'm just kind of gently letting it 
let it go and you see it's just taking that piece off and now we're going to turn it around you can see it just peels off layer by layer There you go. It's coming off nicely. Be sure to kind of clean as you go, like I said, on your working surface. Uh, we don't want to contaminate or damage the, the dye in any way. Now it may not seem like a lot, uh, but you know, there's some people say, oh, that looks pretty shiny. I'll just leave it at that. I'm not gonna go any further. Well, you can still feel it's un uneven. And the, and the really important, if you took a cross section of this, this would have all these little valleys and then grooves. Or we wanna make as much contact with the dye with the heat sink as possible. Yeah. For those uh, Mac Pro users that have suffered from random shutdowns, that's usually a result of overheating in, in the thermal uh, circuits kick in so um, making sure you have the the best contact you possibly can with the heat sink and the dye is important so that's why we're going to completely remove this uh, this solder on here get that nice and wet a little bit of wet right there And I'm sanding only in one direction. Um, and the reason for that is if you try to go back and forth, you're going to rock it and it's going to be uneven. And you'll notice that once you uh, get to the actual surface of the dye itself, you will notice this kind of like this hazing. And that's actually the hazing is the. Um, the solder that's still on the surface and then this polish area here that's actually the, the surface itself so so but that looks actually pretty good so we're just going ahead and um, clean everything's up and then we'll kind of summarize the video and, uh, and then talk about um, different options here hopefully this will this video will uh, instruct people to how to do this and this isn't applicable just to the uh, Mac Mac pros I mean somebody wanted to remove the uh, integrated heat uh, uh, spreader from their um, processors for their PC or whatever. I mean, this this hopefully this will help them as well. Uh, it's pretty much ubiquitous. The thing is, it's it's not as difficult as it may seem. It just requires a little bit of uh, preparation and work and just a few tools if you don't have them. Uh, it shouldn't take you uh, very long. Um, probably about, you know, this whole process probably takes about maybe in about an hour to do both of them. Um, once you've set up your, everything up. So it's, uh, it, I think it's worth it, uh, definitely worth it, um, rather than, than pay to have someone else remove them for you. Um, and if you, especially if you've decided to, to make the upgrade and add new, new processors to your Mac Pro, um, if you leave the lid on, you know, it actually requires more work and there's also a greater risk of you damaging your Mac Pro motherboard for the slight variations of, of the depth by over tightening and or not getting a good enough seal form and also uh, these things generate more heat the shields do it's harder to cool them with a lid on versus not having a lid on them so that's something to consider as well so that way you would also don't risk damaging your Mac Pro trying to mod it by modifying the heat sinks in any way or hope this uh, was informative for, for people out there, at least to see uh, the process of uh, uh, removing the integrated heat spreader from their processors if they choose to do so, and how to do it. Uh, and this is only applicable to those that are soldered. You know, they're a group of processors where they glue them on, actually, and I've seen people knock them off in a vise with a hammer, believe it or not, in a piece of wood. I do not recommend ever doing that. These come off pretty easy once you've uh, set it up and you're good to go. So uh, thanks a lot.
for listening and I hope this helps somebody else uh, if they make the decision to do it themselves. Thanks. <laughs>